Now this next laptop I'm about to show you is one I've been pretty excited about. It was hoping to get it into the studio sooner rather than later. So I finally got it into the studio late last week and I've been putting it through its paces ever since. Now, one of the things that makes this unique, of course, is the fact that it has dual displays, but not just any dual displays, one 15.6 inch main OLED display and a secondary 14 inch 4K display as well. And they work really well in conjunction, great for multitasking, great especially for video editing. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo. Coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell. This way you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. Now I know some of you are not getting notified, so make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll let you know when I post new videos on those platforms as well. And of course, in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, Asus is not sponsoring this video. They are not paying me for this video. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is seeing this video before its release. And for those wondering, Asus did not provide a review unit. I purchased it with my own money. And I can tell you this laptop was not cheap, so it really cost me a lot of money. So if you want to help out this channel, help support this channel, why not hit that like button and make sure you hit the subscribe button because this all leads to growth, this all leads to views, and that helps me make some of this money back. Thank you in advance for your support. And with that out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now, there are two boxes within the main box, and the smaller one, of course, houses the power adapter. It's a pretty robust adapter which needed its own box. It's 230 watts, and it uses a barrel pin connector. In addition to that, they also give you your extension cord. Now, in the main box, of course, will be your laptop. And I have to say, the packaging is excellent on this. And once you lift the lid, the laptop is presented to you, giving you a really nice unboxing experience. You also get some documentation and warranty information as well. Now, they also include a pen. We'll get into that in a little bit. And, of course, a wrist rest that you're going to need to type for extended periods of time. We'll get into that a little bit later. Holding the unit for the first time, it's actually pretty robust in terms of the weight. Not too heavy for a 15-inch laptop, although I've seen thinner. But I really love that celestial blue. But it will collect a lot of fingerprints very easily. You will be wiping it down. But it's actually a beautiful laptop in terms of look. And of course, as we always do, let's check out the port selection. We'll start off on the left side where you get your DC in, that's where you charge your device. You also have an HDMI 2.0, a USB-A 3.1, and a heat vent. Moving over to the right side, you get a Thunderbolt 3 port that supports four lanes. You also get a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, another heat vent, and of course, a USB-A 3.1 Gen 2. Now, I was surprised this doesn't have an SD card slot, especially if this is geared towards creators who need to move media from their cameras and so forth onto the laptop. So that's a really surprising move, not including one. The Asus ZenBook Pro Duo comes with Windows 10 Pro, but I know a lot of you in my audience also need Microsoft Office. I have some great savings from today's sponsor. Check it out. Today's video is brought to you by LVL Key, your one-stop shop for Windows 10 professional OEM keys, Microsoft Office keys, Game Keys, Steam CD keys, and so much more. Okay, here's how it works. Windows 10 Pro, $15.76. With my special 30% discount code just for my audience, you can bring it down to $11.03, which is a steal. Need Microsoft Office 2019? No problem, I got you covered. I have a 25% discount code, which brings it down from $66.05 to $49.54. That's an amazing price. Ordering is easy and safe. Head on over to lvlkey.com for these great savings, and remember to use my discount codes. And I want to thank LVL Key for sponsoring today's video. Now this, of course, is the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo, and the name Duo obviously implies there are two screens, and of course, that's what there is on this laptop. Let's start off with the main display, and then we'll get into that secondary display. So the main display has a 15.6 inch OLED 4K display. That means it has a resolution of 3840 by 2160. It's a 16 to 9 touch screen that has some really thin bezels. It has an 89% screen to body ratio. And I have to say, this display is absolutely gorgeous. In fact, I think it's one of the most stunning displays I've seen all year and maybe of all time. It's that good. 
it has all the hallmarks of an OLED display. You have those really deep inky blacks, the very vibrant colors that just seem to pop off the display. It is simply superb. And it's a very bright display coming in at 402 nits, making this a very good choice for both indoor and outdoor use. And here's how it stacks up against some of its competition. As you can see, anything above 300 nits in my book is considered a very bright display or a very good display in terms of brightness. This doesn't disappoint. And at 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 100% of the DCI-P3 wide color gamut, this is the creative professional's dream. It's that good. It's an excellent choice for things such as Photoshop, Lightroom, and of course, 4K video editing. And it has some pretty slim bezels, which we always love to see with its 89% screen to body ratio. And of course, that main display is great, but it also has the secondary display. And what you're getting here is a 14 inch 4K display with a resolution of 3840 by 1110. So it's a very wide display and it's a matte display. So you don't get a lot of those unnecessary glare or reflections. So that's good, especially if you're looking straight down at it. You're not getting the glare from the lights. That's a very good thing. And as far as this display is concerned, it's a touch display. It's very responsive. It's a very vibrant display as well. It's not quite as bright at 280. 89 nits but it's bright enough to get the job done and I think it's a really good combination and to me this is a great combination because it does open up a myriad of possibilities especially if you're using things such as Photoshop, Lightroom or of course Premiere Pro. It makes editing video all that much better and to me this is what the MacBook should have done with their touch bar rather than be limited in that sense this really opens up all the possibilities and to me where this really shines of course is that multitasking that secondary display allows you to multitask like never before. Now they do include the pen at no additional cost, so that's always good, but it only has 1,024 levels of pressure sensitivity. It's a little surprising when more of the higher end laptops and two-in-ones we've seen as of late are going with 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. But as far as taking notes, sketching out artwork, it actually worked really well. Both screens support the pen, so you can use the pen, of course, on that secondary screen pad plus. So this is the front-facing camera on the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo, uh, 720p, 30 frames per second. Uh, there's a slight delay on this. I'm not sure what's going on as far as the frame rates are concerned. It is a 30 frames per second camera, 720p as I mentioned. I guess it's good for Skype. I guess it's good for video conferencing. But you know, at this price point, let's start elevating the level of cameras. These manufacturers seem to put these. Uh, lower end cameras on there when I think they should start bumping them up start put something a little bit better But I'm curious to know what you think let me know in the comments section below and because you have that 14 inch secondary display There's less room for the keyboard so you don't get a wrist rest You'll have to use that separate wrist rest that they do include if you want to do extended periods of typing now Speaking of the typing it does have some pretty decent key travel. I thought it had good tactile feedback I actually really like the keyboard now as far as the backlight, it's a multi-stage backlight and it worked really well, lighting up the keys, letting you get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. That's always good. And because of that secondary display where it's positioned, they had to put the touchpad on the right side of the keyboard. And some may like that, some may not like that. Those who are used to gaming laptops are sort of used to that. Uh, I actually not crazy about it, but it did work well. It is a precision touchpad. All the gestures worked well. Two finger scrolling was buttery smooth. And the touchpad also doubles as a number pad. We've seen this on other Zen books in the past. In fact, I saw it on the Zen book 14 I reviewed earlier this year and it worked well for those number crunchers. You're going to really like it, especially accountants and those people who can work with numbers, Excel spreadsheets. You're going to appreciate that number pad for others. It's okay to have. It's a nice uh, thing to have on a laptop. And just like other Zen books we took a look at in the past, this has the Ergo lift hinge. A couple of things that this does, it gives you better airflow and it also gives you a nice typing angle. Okay, let's talk about user upgradability. What you have to do in order to access the inside is remove the torque screws. There are a couple of rubber stops that you need to remove. There are two screws underneath those. Remove them, remove the bottom plate, and you're in. It's a rather easy process, but be careful removing those rubber stops. You want to scratch the bottom plate. Now, once inside, you'll notice that 71 watt hour battery. You'll notice the two fans, one for the CPU, one for the GPU. You'll notice the heat pipes. We'll talk about cooling later on. And you'll want to know whether or not you can upgrade the RAM. Well, the RAM is unfortunately soldered into the motherboard and you won't be able to upgrade that, but you will be able to upgrade the SSD. And speaking of the SSD, you get some really good reads and writes, as you can see here. 
Now, when it comes to performance, it was very good. Now, I actually went with the Core i7 9750H. That's a six core processor, but there's also the Core i9 available. A lot of other reviewers are getting the Core i9 with its eight cores. I would go with that only if you're really doing video editing and those two extra cores will certainly help out in rendering 4K video. But I actually thought the Core i7, the one I have here with the six cores did really well for video editing, 4K video editing. It also did well for gaming, getting playable frame rates as you can see here. And that's because it has the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 with six gigabytes of GDDR6 video RAM. But please keep this in mind, this is not a dedicated gaming laptop. There are others out there that do a better job in terms of thermals. This is really geared towards the content creator that is looking to use this to do 4K video editing, to do Adobe Photoshop with multiple layers. I think you get the picture. Now, when it comes to cooling, they use something called the Cool Air Express system, which uses four heat pipes, which are shared between the CPU and the GPU with a fifth pipe running along the length of the chassis. Now, both of the fans have 71 blades for better airflow, and there's also generous venting, which also helps dissipate some of the heat. And of course, it has the Ergo Lift hinge, which is supposed to help with the airflow. And despite these efforts to try to cool the system down, it still got very warm when you put it under heavy load. And that's because it's packing a lot of power in a relatively thin chassis. And no matter what you do, it's going to generate a lot of heat. So it gets really warm on the bottom. So please keep that in mind. But of course, all this power in the dual displays comes at a price, and that's battery life. Now, this has a 71 watt hour battery, and it did 4 hours and 56 minutes with the screen pad off, and it did 4 hours and 15 minutes with the screen pad on. So not very good in terms of battery life, but I think most of you are going to use this in a plugged in situation. And when you do need to plug in, of course, it does have a pretty robust 230 watt power adapter, and it took 2 hours and 15 minutes to give you a full charge. Not too bad. Now, one area where I think they can do better is audio. The volume is okay, but it didn't have too much bass. It sounded a little bit tinny, and this level of laptop, I was expecting better audio, especially with that Ergo Lift hinge. You think you would get better sound out of the speakers, but really, I was a little bit disappointed with it. But having said that, they're not terrible, and you definitely can use these speakers, but if you want to get any real good uh, audio out of this, I would use uh, headphones, either Bluetooth, or connect them via the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Okay, let's wrap this all up. Can I recommend the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo? Answer is absolutely love this, especially if you're a content creator like me or somebody who does a lot of video editing. If you're using Premiere Pro, this thing is a dream, especially with that secondary display in conjunction with that main OLED display. It's a multitasker's dream as well. I really love this combination. Now, there are some other great things about it. I love the fact that there's pen support for both displays, very strong performance, even out of that Core i7 with the six cores and especially out of that Core i9 with its eight cores although you'll do better with the thermals on the Core i7. But all this power and innovation comes at a price. This is a very expensive laptop and it's geared toward that content creator who doesn't mind spending the money because it will get the job done, especially if you're doing 4K video editing. And that's why I'm gonna recommend the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo. It is definitely worth your money. So what do you think about the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo? I actually love this. And the reason I love it, that dual display is actually done really well. Love the fact that you can really multitask with it. It's much more effective, I think, than the touch bar in the MacBook Pro, which is very limited in my opinion. I think this really takes it a step further. The fact that you can use the pen on both the main display and the secondary display to manipulate objects and so forth, to take notes, to sketch out artwork, to me is a game changer where I really think this has a good application is of course video editing and specifically 4k video editing this is a laptop i think creators can get into because not only does it have the horsepower under the hood but it also has the dual display to allow you to multitask it really makes your work product really streamlined and really good and i really like that now with all this innovation with those dual displays of course you're going to take a hit on battery so you're looking at around five hours or less with the screen pad off, with the secondary display off, we're looking at about four hours and 15 minutes or so with it on, so not very good. But a lot of people are gonna use this at their desk. They're going to be editing video. They're not gonna be using this on battery all that much. So that's not a deal breaker as far as I'm concerned, if, especially if you're a creator. 
Uh, it charges pretty fast. You're looking at around two hours and 15 minutes. It's a 230 watt power adapter and it uses a barrel pin connector. What do you think of the ZenBook Pro Duo? Do you think it's gimmicky? I don't. I actually think this has a real application in the real world, especially for the creative professional. Uh, as far as thermals are concerned, it's a little bit hot as on the bottom when you're really running it on the full load, but nothing terrible. Again, you know, this is not a gaming laptop, although you get very playable frame rates, as you saw in this video. But really, this is a creator's laptop, and I think that's the main theme here, and you're going to be paying for it. It's not cheap. It obviously comes in at around $2,500 to $3,000 or plus, so you're really looking at a very expensive proposition. But I think the audience that it's targeting toward doesn't mind paying the big price as long as it's the right tool for the job, and I think this is. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.